Now, why have we insisted in making all those distinctions in the structure of fatty acids? Saturated and unsaturated, mono and polyunsaturated, cis and trans, omega-6 and omega-3? Well, because these structural differences result in very different behaviors of lipids in our body. So the quality of lipids in our diet very much depends on the balance between these different groups of fats. Let's start examining them from a nutritional point of view. Saturated fatty acids are mainly, although not exclusively, found in food of animal origin. They are nutritionally non-essential. Remember, this doesn't mean that they're not important, just that if necessary, we can build them ourselves. Our body can build saturated fats from glucose and from some amino acids. Stearic acid, the saturated fatty acid 18 carbons long, is preferentially incorporated into triglycerides for storage in adipose tissue. Based on what you know, you should be able to figure out why it wouldn't be possible to use unsaturated fats for storage. At body temperature, they would melt. However, an excess of saturated fatty acids in our diet is detrimental because many of them are atherogenic. They promote endogenous synthesis of cholesterol, they raise LDL cholesterol, soon we will learn why this is bad, and they promote the process of atherosclerosis, putting us at risk for cardiovascular disease. For these reasons, we don't want to eat too many of them. However, also keep in mind that not all saturated fatty acids are equally atherogenic. It's not true that all saturated fats are bad. In fact, some of them are pretty much neutral. The above-mentioned stearic acid, for example, is quite innocent. It's used for storage, and it can also be easily converted to the monounsaturated oleic acid, so it doesn't harm anybody. Palmitic acid, C16, is more or less neutral. But then there are others that are really bad such as the medium-chain lauric C12 and meristic C14, which are highly atherogenic. This slide shows you some dietary sources of saturated fats. As you can see, most of them are animal. Moving from left to right, the quality of their fat gets worse due to the highest presence of those bad fatty acids, such as lauric and meristic. Eggs have a lot of stearic, so they are pretty much innocuous. Then we have chicken meat, milk and dairy, red meat, and then on the very right you find some vegetable sources of a lot of saturated fat, coconut and palm. We normally don't use them in the kitchen, but the food industry likes their oils very much because they are cheap and have interesting technological properties. So coconut kernel oil, palm oil and palm kernel oil are commonly used as ingredients in many products. Palm oil is what we make from the pulp of the fruit, the yellow part, and then palm kernel oil from the white kernel. Not only they are very rich in saturated fats, but they have the worst type of saturated fats, lauric and meristic. We refer to palm kernel and coconut kernel oil as tropical fats. They are bad, and we don't want them too much of them in our diet, so make sure to look for them on the ingredient list and avoid food that contain them whenever possible. Palm oil is a little bit better because it has more palmitic acid. Cocoa butter from cocoa also contains saturated fats, but it's mostly stearic, so it's much better. Let's move on to the monounsaturated fats. They are also not nutritionally essential, because they can build from the corresponding saturated fatty acids of the same length. So, for example, stearic C18 can be converted into oleic, because our body can introduce the unsaturation in position 9. Even if they are not essential, however, we still should try to get them from food, and especially oleic acid, which is probably the best possible fatty acid in our diet, because it is very beneficial to our health. It lowers blood cholesterol, improves the HDL to LDL ratio in our bloodstream, again, we will understand this better soon, and in general it exerts a protective action against cardiovascular disease. But don't think that all monounsaturated fats are equally as good. For example, erucic acid, C22, is toxic for us. It was once abundant in rapeseed oil, which is why it couldn't be marketed for human consumption for a long time. But today we have developed a genetically modified version of rapeseed that builds oleic instead of erucic. We call it canola oil, and it is now okay for human consumption. We find oleic acid in olives and olive oil, which should really be our main dietary sources of this good fat. 
Olive oil is an excellent oil. It has a rich flavor, it doesn't easily get oxidized, so it's quite stable during storage and cooking, although to maximize its health-promoting activity, it is best eaten raw, so that its good polyphenols are not destroyed. We also have a lot of oleic acid in macadamia nuts, avocados, canola oil, peanuts, and of course peanut butter. About half the fat in peanuts is polyunsaturated, but the other half is oleic. Be careful, however, peanut butter is one of those products in which the food industry likes to add palm oil for color, flavor, texture, and stability. But this also adds saturated fats. Go for the old-fashioned version whenever possible. Finally, we also find some oleic acid in sesame seed and the nuts and seeds in general, although polyunsaturated fats are prevalent. Now let's move on to the polyunsaturated fats. Some of these molecules are extremely important. They have key structural functions as part of cell membranes phospholipids, especially in those tissues with complex systems of signal transmission, such as our brain and nerves, the retina in our eyes, and the outer structure of our skin. And if that wasn't enough, they also have key regulatory functions as precursors of the eicosanoids, a class of hormone-like substances that we will explore later, and that are master regulators of countless areas of our metabolism, including immunity, inflammation, blood pressure, blood fluidity, and stomach acidity. We already know that the most relevant polyunsaturated fats belong to two different families, the omega-6 and the omega-3 family. In the omega-6 family, we know that linoleic acid, C18-2, is essential. There's no way our body can make it starting from something else, because we do not have any enzyme to introduce unsaturations in position 6. However, we can modify the chain length, so all the other omega-6 are not essential because they can be derived from linoleic acid once we have that. Luckily, it is not very difficult to get linoleic acid from food, because it's quite common. Its richest sources are nuts and seeds, and of course the oils we make from them, such as corn oil or sunflower oil. In the omega-3 family, alpha-linolenic is the other essential fatty acid in our diet. Again, all the other omega-3 can be derived from it. However, this time there is a couple more problems. The first one is that alpha-linolenic is not as widespread in food as linoleic, so we may very well not be getting enough in the first place. And then on top of that, the conversion of alpha-linolenic into the other omega-3 fatty acids is very slow. And this is the reason why it is recommended to have a direct intake of these two other omega-3 fatty acids, EPA eicosapentaenoic and DHA docosaicanoic, although they are not strictly essential, but they are very important for their structural and regulatory functions. They are precursors of some important eicosanoids, and they affect lipid metabolism to lower blood triglycerides and improve blood HDL to LDL cholesterol ratio. The richest source of alpha-linolenic acid are flax seeds and chia seeds, and of course flaxseed oil, but this gets very easily oxidized, so it must be stored very carefully, and rancidity is a problem. Another good source of alpha-linolenic acid are walnuts, and then there's some in soy, soybean oil, rapeseed and rapeseed oil, as well as some type of grass that can be fed to hens to make omega-3 enriched eggs, or cows to have omega-3 enriched milk. EPA and DHA are mainly found in fish, especially fatty fish such as salmon, anchovies, and sardines. We said it's advisable to have a direct intake of these fatty acids, and two to three servings of fish a week will provide us with all the EPA and DHA we need. For those who don't eat fish, some seaweeds are rich in DHA, and then of course there are supplements, or we can make do with the precursor alpha-linolenic from flax seeds and walnuts.